Well, we are Friday bound. Here we are. TGIF. Yeah, we're here. A um, couple reminders before our devotion today. Um, the first is that worship uh, will be uh, this Sunday uh, at 8 a.m. It'll get posted online once again. And um, you should get today, if you haven't already gotten it, uh, just the bulletin and just a reminder uh, that it will be uh, coming out this weekend. Uh, next week, uh, small groups will be back. Uh, my small group will be back in session once again. If you'd like to join us, uh, you can let me know. Just shoot me an email. Give a call here to the church. I'd uh, be happy to sign you up for either the Tuesday morning or night session. No, Wednesday morning or night session or Thursday uh, morning session. Um, and uh, you're welcome to join that. You've got some things happening yep. this week as well. Small groups. We have our last session on the book of Haggai. Uh, so one more to go, and we uh, are going to be meeting as small groups socially once the semester ends to sort of stay connected and stay uh, you know, as church as best we can. And then on Tuesday, uh, 1130 to 1, we've got OWLs uh, via Zoom. So you'll be getting an email from me, all of our older, wiser Lutheran seniors, uh, and really anybody else who wants to join in with us for lunch that day, we'd love to have you. Uh, you'll be getting an email invitation from me. Uh, Alan Andrade is going to be presenting on his work with the SS Leopoldville. Uh, I've got the PowerPoint. I'm making sure the logistics work for us to lunch and learn together. Uh, so just another social, a lot of yeah. meetings of being together as as best as we can. Yeah, and I, I would... And I would encourage you that if you haven't uh, done one of those meetings by Zoom, um, you should try them. John and I can talk you through. John's become really the professional we're, here talking we're, people we're through. We're getting quite good at it. Yeah. And, uh, and people are becoming more comfortable at it as well. Um, I, I think for people, uh, we don't know how long this is going to be. I mean, no matter whether the 15th of May rolls around or not, um, we want to keep everybody healthy. And so we're going to make good decisions that keep our community healthy because our community largely has been healthy mm -hmm. uh, by and large. So we've been so we've been blessed. grateful for that. Yeah. And, uh, and we want to keep that going. So um, we'll come back together when it's safe and we'll figure out ways to do that, do communion in ways that are safe. Um, but in the meantime, uh, you're going to continue gathering people. I'm going to continue gathering people. Even when the study that I'm cur currently doing is done, I'll start a new one. John's starting a new one as yep. soon as small groups are done. So there will be opportunities to keep gathering together. And I just encourage you to do that, even if it's not every week, even if it's in and out as your schedule uh, allows and everything. So We're going to go back to Psalm 23. Um, we had a devotion uh, yesterday. Um, that we had found that really worked well, Psalm 23 in a time of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And uh, and this was a second in a series of six um, that I thought was really good. So uh, we'll jump forward uh, a little bit in the in the psalm mm -hmm. uh, forward uh, to talk about, you know, fearing no evil. So I'll read through the psalm. John will uh, do the devotion. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul and leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. So consider this. We come to the dreaded valley of the shadow of death. The darkest valley just doesn't seem to do it justice, right? So let's dig a little deeper. The Hebrew more accurately renders into English as a deep, dark, death-like shadow. Allow me to crack an amplified translation of that verse. Even though I walk through the deepest, darkest shadow of death-like valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You're seeing the point. COVID-19 is the present deepest, darkest, shadow of death-like valley we find ourselves in. It's interesting how this particular Hebrew word for this valley occurs 18 times in the Bible, 10 of which come from the book of Job. Sounds about right. Hmm. It also shows up in the famous prophecy of Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. 
The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. And all of this could be an adventure and missing the point if we don't really get to the point here. No matter how deep, dark, shadowy, and intolerably death-like the valley may be, no matter how contagious and deadly the virus, no matter how slavish the addiction, how obsessive and compulsive the disorder, how terminal the cancer, how grievous the divorce, how painful the betrayal, how devastating the death, even of your only child, here's the point. I will fear no evil. It doesn't say I will not feel sadness or grieve horrifically or suffer depression or be angry with God or struggle to believe or even fear the worst possible outcome. It says I will fear no evil. It doesn't say I won't get the coronavirus or my worst nightmare will not happen or my marriage will survive or my kids will not have significant problems or the cancer will be cured or I will not fail this test or I will not have to go to rehab. Again, it says, I will fear no evil. Now, this is a curiosity to me. I will fear no evil. Why that? It means Satan, demonic powers, and all the forces of evil and darkness cannot and will not prevail against you. It's, the one, thing, it's one thing to lose the battle with cancer, another thing to entirely lose the war with Satan. Remember the Good Shepherd context of John chapter 10, verse 10 the most favorite Bible verse, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. What if the threat is not evil? What if the real threat is the fear of evil? There's something deep within each of us, something primal and even ancient that fears evil. What if it is this fear that brings us into anxiety and leads us to sin? which shields us from awareness of the presence of God or even our Good Shepherd? What if it's our fear of evil that keeps us from the abundant life of Jesus, even in the midst of the deepest, darkest, shadowiest, deathliest valley of life? This is ponderous, I'll admit. But I believe the Lord put into my heart to say this. There's only one reason we can say I will fear no evil. It's not because evil is not powerful and all around us all the time, it's this, for you are with me. And maybe that's what the rod and the staff are all about. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Maybe at times, especially in these valleys, we need to fear the fear of evil poked and prodded out of us. Maybe we need to be hooked by the staff and pulled back onto the path because of where our fear of evil is taking us. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We must not allow ourselves to be bullied by evil into fear. We know the one thing more powerful than fear is faith. We know the other thing more powerful than fear is love. They know there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. This is who the shepherd is what the shepherd does. This is why we must know the shepherd today more than we knew him yesterday, and why we'll need to know him more tomorrow than we knew him today. Friends, let us pray. Father, in these days of uncertainty, one thing is certain. You are our shepherd. I confess, even beyond my awareness, something deep and primal in me fears evil, and it drives me in an incomprehensible way into the law of sin and death. But you, who are in me, are greater than he who is in the world. You, Jesus, are my shepherd, my good shepherd. You are with me. I will fear no evil, and I welcome your rod and your staff. Come, Holy Spirit, make fear subside and train my faith to arise. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I was um, thinking as you were reading that, John, what I could comment on. And um, it said it so well and so comprehensively. I don't know where else I could go. Yeah. I, 
that sense of, um, you know, if we're people of faith, what are we really fearing? You know, and um, we know that God has defeated death and the devil. That's our confession as yeah. Christians, right? Um, so our, our fear is is our fear of evil is really the key. Um, it was it was powerful. As a powerful devotion uh, to think about, and I think it named it very, very well. Uh, where we hang in these days, you know, it get, gets back to the question that was asked in our Bible study, um, which I mentioned yesterday in our recording. Um, somebody had asked, you know, whether or not Satan had caused COVID nineteen, mm. and um, it's it's gut core, isn't it? it? It's right out of the gut and the core of what our fear is that somehow that Satan or evil has a grip on us. Uh, and we... that we, we did something that there's, you know, I think f fear breeds thought and thought looks for actions or Spins. cause. Spins. And it's that self-fulfilling prophecy. Like I was thinking about, you know, fear of evil of, you know, being an Easter season, going to the disciples in the upper room. And what could be done to them that was could be worse than what had already happened, mm -hmm. and they just get stuck in that fear of what's outside of, and feeling like we're there too. Yeah. Of you know, I there are things that I would love to do. I'd love to go to Home Depot or Lowe's way more than I go, but I'm afraid to go, and. But if I take the proper precautions, if I you know, do what I'm told to do, and, and I go in faith that those people are truthful and honest and, and have my best interest in policy and procedure, yeah, what am I fearful of? Well, and even if you do get sick, you know, this sense that God is our shepherd, um, that even in that dark valley that now is now visiting you that that there is hope and life and God dwelling with in the middle of that um, you know that's really the sense of you know going through that valley of the shadow of death I shall fear no evil you know, that even in those darkest times because the Lord is our shepherd, we don't fear those dark times. And um, that's asking a lot. Yeah. But it, but it really is the core of what faith really is about. You know, to trust that even though what you see, as you go through that valley, what you're experiencing, what you're feeling, that God has this. He's got this somehow. In ways that I, I'm not always sure we can put into words, but, um, but I'm okay because God's there. I think mean, that's really hard. Yeah, it's like I was thinking, like if I go someplace by myself and it's new and different, I'm a little bit apprehensive. If I go mm -hmm. someplace with somebody else, it's not that anymore. You're and I feel like we kind of get that sense a little bit. This almost doesn't make it explicit, but you have somebody walking side by side. He's he's writing as though somebody's walking right next to him, and it's not just this. I'm going and like you know where the wild things are, and it's this new and scary place, and mm -hmm. you see these things that terrify you, but you're going with somebody else, and you know that person's there in the midst of it with you. Yeah, which I think for us we have that sense that we're going it alone quite often. And it's the person we can't necessarily see that's always there with us. Yeah. That's the looking with the eyes of faith in the midst of all this, that we aren't really alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
So as we walk today, God goes with us, and uh, we hope that sustains you. I think what I'll do is maybe put these six days of devotions. I'll send that out to the congregation. Yeah. These, um, are really that way, these are really great. It's a kind of cool series that I, that we found. And um, so I'll, uh, I'll send that out to the congregation so you can see the other four days as well, not just what we did on Thursday and today. But um, hope that word keeps you today and tomorrow. And we'll look forward to you joining us for worship on Sunday, Sunday. morning. Sunday morning. So God's blessings. Take care. Bye-bye now.